And the next person I want to introduce is our Quinsigaman Community College President, Gail Carberry, and she just wants to do a welcome to all of you. Thank you, Steve. It's great to see so many people coming together to share good stuff. You know, I think that's one of the things I love the most about community colleges um, is that they like to share best practices and they're very student centric and I, I appreciate the fact that you've made the time to make this happen. And I also want to give my deep appreciation and, um, and my incredibly fond feelings for the faculty at Quinsigamon who are always stepping up to do things like this. So thank you for hosting this tonight. So good evening and welcome to Worcester. This is my ancestral home. Um, I come from Worcester roots. I tell people my mother's family is buried in rural cemetery and my father's family is buried in, um, in uh, Hope Cemetery, so our roots are very deep. Um, Quinsigamon has been here for 50 years in the city of Worcester, uh, 50 plus. We will be graduating our 50th associate degree class this June, so we're very excited about that. We began with 300 students, and this year we'll serve about 13,000 students at five academic si sites spread around uh, Worcester County. The wonderful thing about rounding up and rounding down, saying about or we average about, <laughs> is that even I can do the math. <laughs> So that's about uh, 12,700 more students today going through Quinsigamon than we had at our beginning. Um, virtually every graduate of Quinsigamon, and, and your campuses too, have to complete some level of mathematics before graduating. And to be certain, uh, it's often the progress of those students through your curriculum that spells the difference between graduation and not. And uh, I want to say that I know that you work very hard every day to pull as many of those students through. It's not really easy because so many of the students come in with deficits. But you work so hard and you're so passionate about what you do. And I know the students are most appreciative. The work that mathematics faculty do uh, for students at Quinsig and colleges around the country it's key to the ability of the United States to add educated workers to an increasingly STEM-oriented economy. I tell people, and, I, and Steve tells me that this is part of your conference agenda, that M is the foundation upon which STEM is built. In essence, every engineer, every biotechnician, every climatologist, every person working on cures for what ails this world have had a mathematics professor along the way. So you are the unsung heroes. Give yourself an applause, a round of applause. <laughs> yeah. um, as president, I, I increasingly try to use data and analytics and logistics and as well as, of course, always budgetary data to inform the decision making that we do at QCC. Um, I, I am not into STEM myself personally, but I know a lot of people on my campus who are, and I have enormous respect for the work that every one of them do. The work our faculty engages in to advance the learning of students, as I said, is not easy. We live in a world where people are not always acculturated to thinking logically. Uh, sometimes people want others to create the answers for them. I'm sure you've seen that. And it's hard for some people to draw appropriate conclusions. So take, for example, I was thinking about this, you know, lo what, what's, what is logic? What, is, what makes sense? And, and how does this differ uh, from one generation to the next? You know, when you look at the warning labels on products today, it's amazing what you'll find. Warning, do not spray in eyes on the side of the Windex bottle. Good logical advice designed to keep the manufacturer of the window spray from successfully being sued by customers who voluntarily spray Windex backwards. <laughs> or how about the label on the side of the Craftsman lawnmower? Do not attempt to remove blade while mower is running. <laughs> Here's another one. Not dishwasher safe. 
on the side of the RCA TV remote control. <laughs> Heaven help us if the students that we see have logical skills such as those. You know, as a college president, part of my job is to protect the school from lawsuits. And I understand why these, these labels are placed on things. But I was thinking about mathematics, what goes on in math courses. And I think there's some warning labels we should all begin to consider. Warning, math professors have problems. <laughs> Lots of them. By the way, scientists say that one out of four people is crazy. So look around, <laughs> look to your left, look to your right. If they seem normal, you better look in the mirror. I think we should alert the math students in advance of any possible hazards in that regard. There's another one I think we should have. Warning. Moving variables from one side of an equal sign to the other may cause the equation to become unbalanced. <laughs> I think I saw something like that, you know, similar to that when I looked under my, the lid of my washing machine. You know, I, I thought it was pretty, you know, uh, sounded pretty official. So we need one of those in our, in our math classrooms. How about this warning? This pie not for human consumption. <laughs> I did see a label on a bag of peanuts that warned consumers that the contents may, may contain nuts. <laughs> I think we should be sure that students are warned before they are introduced to pie that consuming it could cause them some problems. I also believe we should have some disclaimers. How about this one? All complex numbers contained in today's math lesson are imaginary and intended for the amusement of the class and the professor. Any resemblance to real numbers is purely coincidental. <laughs> to be certain, students take math very seriously. I know I always did. For many of us, it leaves long-term psychological uh, scars. I still have nightmares, even at the ripe old age of 66, that I'm heading into my math final with a full realization that I never went to class due to a glitch in the registrar's office. <laughs> That dream, that nightmare is not just my own. I have talked to so many people who have that dream that their baccalaureate degree is not official. Somewhere somebody made a mistake. And then you know what that means. That means if you have no baccalaureate degree, there goes your master's, your doctorate, and everything else. <laughs> I, I actually, because I have that particular dream about mathematics, I wonder what dreams math professors have. Do you find yourself, yourself in your dreams having to defend the fact that the English thesis you were supposed to hand in before the end of your final semester of undergraduate study was inadvertently used as scrap paper in your advanced calculus course? <laughs> Today, that's not such a big problem because everybody's got a backup on the computer. But in the days that I was going to school, you had one copy and one copy only. I had a colleague when he was doing his dissertation used to keep it in the refrigerator because if the house burned down, he felt pretty safe. <laughs> so I guess we all have those, those moments, those aspects in our lives. Here in Massachusetts, there's been talk of an early retirement incentive program. We don't know for sure if higher ed will be part of it, is there still working it through the legislature. I hear it may come out in phases. Um, you know, there would be a five-year addition to the age and years of service in the formula. I think it's, you know, some combination thereof with five as, as the, um, the factor. Um, you can see the senior non-math faculty counting the five years on their fingers or on their cell phone calculators <laughs> to try and figure out what their best, their best solution is. But the senior math faculty, they're just strolling along with confidence. They've already done all the numbers in their head. I don't personally plan to retire for a while. Uh, as I indicated, my career has been long and happy, and I hope yours will be very fulfilling as much as mine was. There are a bevy of bumper stickers out there that celebrate the long careers of math professors. And I'm thinking about practicing up on some of them because I'm afraid I'm going to lose some of my good faculty if we do get an early retirement. So I'll try them out on you tonight, okay? 
old math professors never die. They just reduce their functions. <laughs> old math professors never die. They just become irrational. <laughs> old math professors never die. They just can't differentiate. <laughs> but even as old math professors might move toward retirement, we can be assured that we will never run out of replacements because mathematicians, more than any other group, know how to multiply. <laughs> Have a wonderful conference. Go forth and multiply the knowledge of how to get more students to complete mathematics in college and maybe even to love the discipline the way that you do. We're counting on you. <laughs>